Cybernetics. Models are not fictions. God is more than a shared story. Hello, I am Javier Livas. As some of you know, I am an advocate for cybernetics. The science of cybernetics was born from an interdisciplinary effort to study feedback and purposeful systems. It was later defined by Norbert Wiener as the science of control and communications, and then recast in abstract terms as the science of the behavior of ideal machines by Ross Ashby. It is also proving very useful as Stafford Beer, science of effective organization. All four definitions can live together. With the help of Heinz von Forster, Paul Pangaro, Umberto Maturana, and many others, cybernetics has evolved into a new scientific paradigm. In this video, I will apply some cybernetic and systems thinking to show you a practical case where it can make a difference. The material I will use to illustrate how it works is the video by Professor Yuval Noah Harari, A Brief History of Humankind. I have no qualms about his facts regarding the history of Homo sapiens, but perhaps he ought to extend his cybernetic thinking to some of his assumptions and conclusions. I have found three very important issues that I could give added value to Harari's explanation about historical evolution. First, the role of fictions. Second, the role of positive feedback. And third, the role of purpose. Regarding fictions, in Professor Harari's view, fictions are created, strangely, to develop trust and cooperation. Making up these stories is a unique feature of Homo sapiens. Regarding feedback, Harari praises positive feedback as an accelerator of human development. His point is that history is full of these loops that accelerate certain historical events. Money, applied to scientific research, is an example. The power and benefits acquired keep getting bigger as more money pours in. Regarding purposeless evolution, explained in Lesson 16, Part 3, he says, and I quote, From a purely scientific viewpoint, human life has absolutely no meaning. According to science, at least to the science in the 21st century, humans, just like all other phenomena in the world, are the outcome of blind evolutionary processes that operate without any goal, without any meaning. Our actions, our lives, are not part of some cosmic plan. Now let's insert a full cybernetic perspective. Let me start with human organizations as fictions. Professor Harari says that corporations are legal fictions. He is not inventing. As an attorney, I know that law schools everywhere in the Western world have been teaching this. Harari says that the Roman Empire, the Catholic Church, and the modern state are fictions. God is also a fiction, and so are money and human rights. However, as a cybernetician, I have to disagree. Is an anthill a fiction? Clearly not. Why would a human organization be a fiction? Is GM a fiction? I think that the idea he is looking for are shared models. We will come to that. From a cybernetic perspective, corporations are as real as a person and as real as any person or a baseball bat. Norbert Wiener, the father of cybernetics, showed that communications help build the social tissue of a company or corporation or even the state in much the same fashion that our nervous system alerts us against stepping barefoot on shattered glass. Consider a victim of a drone attack. Is the drone responsible or is it a human organization that perpetrates the attack? Legal studies have lacked the notion of information as explained by Norbert Wiener and Claude Shannon. Law schools explain the world with a language of their own. They should borrow from cybernetics. Is electronic money any less real than paper money? Of course not. Both carry information, and information may not have a material existence, but it is not a fiction. 
The same goes for software. You cannot touch software. It is pure order. Computers are the embodiment of universal machines, invented by Alan Turing, that can adopt many different internal configurations depending on the software it uses. That looks pretty real to me. Let's face it, information is real and considered an inseparable part of a trilogy together with matter and energy. It defines the mix of energy and matter. From a cybernetic perspective, the models of the world we carry inside our heads are totally real and change our behavior by changing the synaptic connections between neurons. These are the equivalent of the hard wiring of the battery toy dog that barks. Is God a fiction or just a convenient story? Many scientists have been trying to discover the mind of God. We must assume that scientists are not idiots and that the so-called mind of God is at least some sort of code or set of equations that explain how the universe works. It is said that man is built to God's image. It does not necessarily mean a physical image, but a convergence of both towards some model. In some cases, God is portrayed as human-like, and sometimes humans appear as faulty, godlike creatures. God is more than a story. It is, at least for Christians, a model of perfection embodied by Jesus Christ. This model changes human behavior, and if it does, then it is totally real. To quote neuroscientist Joseph Ledoux, you are your synapses. Human organizations are systems with emergent properties not contained in the sum of their elements. They are so real that Stuffer Beer, the father of management cybernetics, points to highly complex systems as acquiring purposes of their own, disregarding their creators. There is even a name for this, pathological autopoiesis, meaning unhealthy self-production, of which cancer is the best known example. For someone unjustly serving time, does it do him any good to argue that a fictional organization put him in jail? Of course not. Most of the problems afflicting the world today are due to out-of-control, large, complex systems. Believing that organizations are fictions does little to break away from the status quo. We cannot fix broken government institutions by trying to fix the individuals who work there. You have to redesign the whole system and preferably following viability principles. More about feedback. I am sure you have heard the term snowball effect applied to both desirable and undesirable events. That is positive feedback. Harari does a great job introducing positive feedback, a key cybernetic concept to explain historic evolution. Global warming is an example of a dangerous positive feedback loop. The warmer it gets, the more CO2 is liberated from the permafrost and so on. However, positive feedback is by no means the whole story. All living systems have one or many positive feedback loops to make them run in at least one or more negative error-correcting loops to rein in the energy, create a balance, and produce a life-sustaining equilibrium. Life, history, institutions, religions cannot be described without using both types of feedback. Harari's course does a ton of good by accepting the existence of feedback in historic processes, but could do better if he could also introduce at least a hint of its recursive nature. Both positive and negative feedbacks are recursive, meaning they occur simultaneously at many levels of organization, 
individuals, families, cities, societies, etc. Borrowing from the Santa Fe Institute, life exists at the border of chaos, where free energy can be controlled by a relatively small structure. For instance, the information contained in the physical structure of DNA. It is very satisfactory to hear Harari talk about feedback even in a limited sense. Most universities throughout the world do not give feedback and cybernetics the importance they really have. Most university professors should follow Harari's example and start accepting this other scientific paradigm which was born to deal precisely with purposeful behavior. In fact, today, most of science is about making computerized models that are continuously replaced by a better model. Science today is much less so about trying to search for ultimate truths or inviolable laws. Gods, Humans, and Purpose When Harari describes God as a fiction, and purpose being absent from human evolution, there are ample grounds to differ, with all due respect. Stafford Beer defined the purpose of a system is what the system does. From this perspective, what is one of the proven purposes of the universe? Think about it for a moment. The contents of A Brief History of Humankind course is proof that, regardless of whether a cosmic plan is acknowledged or not, the evolution of humans shows a pattern towards higher and higher complexity, always wrestling against the forces of entropy. We are creatures with a built-in notion of purpose, whether we choose to believe in God or not. To say that God is everywhere is not very different from saying that the universe is informed or contains information. To say that God knows all and sees all is not far from accepting information as an integral part of the mc squared equation. The truth is that the four forces of physics appear fine-tuned to produce a universe which in turn can produce life. Cosmic plan or no plan, this is what the system does, and we, being here, are living proof of it. The conclusion I would suggest is that our obvious purpose in life is to survive as a species, do not mess up the planet, and continue to search for answers to any question or questions that seem relevant at any given time. This mission is more than enough to keep us busy, interested, and highly motivated, and perhaps even healthy too. I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching, sharing, and producing comments of your own. If you are interested in more cybernetic thinking, please watch Universo Kubernetes, the universe seen through the lens of cybernetics and chaos theory, right here on YouTube. The end.